Hello, Michael here with another How Do I Render tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to render up a translucent creature using RenderMan and Maya. Um, I just wanted to start out by showing you how I painted up this particular character I'm working on. So I've got a slug here, so slugs by their nature have some translucency to them. We'll be applying subsurface scattering once we're in Maya to achieve that effect uh, to get it to look somewhat uh, this believable as a slug. So uh, at the moment I've just got a diffuse map painted off in a couple of different layers here. Um, I did want to point out one thing that is also a possibility to do but um, I didn't end up doing. So um, you can actually paint in custom alpha maps for uh, subsurface scattering. So if you wanted to uh, bump up the amount or reduce the amount of subsurface scattering in particular areas you could do something like exporting this white map which I've just sort of created on a um, on a separate layer in whatever painting program that you're using I'm using 3d code um, so I could export this as an alpha um, and hook it up into the gain channel for one of the subsurfaces so for instance this would probably go into maybe the um, the top level the the short the short gain um, but I didn't end up liking the results I was getting and um, I've been having some unfavorable issues with my um, my my edge quality of my brushes in 3d coat so I need to sort of work on getting that to look a little bit better but um, I did end up liking the the diffuse map um, and just uh, running that into um, a subsurface scattering as a color um, map rather than using it as an alpha map. So um, I'll show you how I hook it all up and um, we'll just do a little bit of viz dev here and we'll try and get it to look kind of cool. All right, so here we are in Maya. We've got our slug um, in the scene and I've given him a couple of eyes. They're just glassy eyes. Um, and I've also applied a uh, Pixar surface shader to him as well, which you'll see hooked up here. So basically what's going on at the moment is that we've got our diffuse color map plugged into our diffuse channel. Uh, we've also got a displacement map which I generated in 3D uh, in ZBrush and a normal map which I also generated in ZBrush. You were looking at a pretty close to the highest high poly model in 3D code. I think that was about 300k. Um, the final map was generated off a 2 million poly object I believe um, and the current slug is 1200, uh, 12,000 polys uh, which could actually do to be a little bit less but um, I wasn't keen on spending too much time on this. So uh, let's do a quick render and see what it looks like at the moment. Um, and also for your reference, uh, this is just a real basic scene set up with just a single light um, with a sort of lower intensity to it and just um, a plane there. Uh, I think it's just got the blend applied to it actually. I haven't applied a Apex eye shader to it yet. Okay, so you can just see that I've got the diffuse on there at the moment. I'm um, getting no subsurface scattering. It doesn't look too bad um, with this map, but um, it's missing a little bit of that je ne sais quoi. So um, let's get some subsurface scattering and I'll take you through um, how I develop uh, this particular character. So back in the Hypershade editor, the first thing I'm gonna do is select my shader. I'm going to call this Solug and we're going to go down to the subsurface scattering lobe and I'm going to use multiple mean free pass which will give me three layers of subsurface scattering. How this works in case you've never done it before is we've got our short gain which is our top level of subsurface scattering, um, our subsurface color which is our middle channel and then our long gain which is our furthest away from the surface. So um, if you just think of those like layers of skin or flesh, that's sort of an easy way to wrap your around, mind around it. And um, essentially is how you control it is with gain and distance. So the distance is how far that color is being transmitted into the skin, for instance, and the gain is how um, opaque it is essentially. And the gain will affect how it blends with the other colors. So keep that in mind as well. So what I wanna do is plug my texture, which is my, my diffuse channel texture, into my subsurface scattering color. Um, and, the, and I'm going to do that into the middle channel. And the reason I want to do that is because I want it to look like um, some of the texture is actually a little bit beneath the skin, as well as getting, uh, getting it from the diffuse channel to make it appear on top of the skin as well. If I plug it just straight into the short channel, um, it doesn't tend to look as good. It tends to block out all the other subsurface channels, especially when you get a complex color 
um, map. So I think I find the middle for if you're just doing something basic like this, the middle channel is a good um, place to chuck it in. And also, um, if you look at some reference, so I just pulled up this image of a slug here. Um, particularly with young slugs, they're very translucent. I'm probably not going to go for something quite this translucent. But if you look at these spots on its sort of flesh, they actually appear to be within the slug itself, not just on the surface of it. And obviously it's got specularity, which is increasing that effect. I'm going to apply some specularity as well uh, to help aid that. But um, having it sort of beneath the surface um, makes that a little bit more believable. So we'll grab our result RGB and actually I'm going to plug in a, a Pixar HSL node. And the reason I'm doing this is in case I want to adjust the saturation or the hue for our subsurface. I could do the same for our diffuse channel if I wanted, if I was doing some vis dev and I just wanted to run through a couple of different colors. Um, that's really useful to be able to do, especially if you're doing something for a client, for instance, and they want to see some variations on colors. You can just you know, slide through your HSL and send them renders and get it turned around pretty quickly. And then you can go on and actually change the color manually if you need to. Um, so we'll run our result RGB into subsurface color, which is going to be that middle channel. And um, we'll take a render uh, in a moment. I'll just get these gains sorted out. So the gain for um, the middle channel, which is what our map's plugged into, I'm going to set to 1.0. I want this to be really strong. I want this to look like um, the, the color is bleeding into the skin. The multiple mean free path distance, I'm going to set to low though. I don't want it to be too excessive. I don't want it to start to get blurry because it's going so deep. So on particular angles, you'll see it looking deeper. So you'll lose the sharpness of the textures. And, and because it's a sort of spotted character, I want those spots to still appear a little bit sharp. Uh, the short gain, so what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to make the short gain very small, uh, just a very small distance, 0.25. And all these distances are dependent on the size of your model as well. So 0.25 might be a lot for you or it might be a little. I know for this it's, it's, um, it's not too big. Um, and I'm actually going to use a cool color for our um, subsurface, uh, our short gain. Um, the reason I want to do this is because I want to just back the color off a little bit um, in on this particular model because I've tested this out. I found that uh, he was coming through a little bit hot. So I, I think a bluer color um, will aid that. So I might just make it a sort of a little bit saturated. The value is really important here as well. Obviously, the darker you go, the less uh, importance it's going to see. So um, try and stick it to your high values if you want to see a, a realistic return on the color. And for my long gain, I'm going to go with something a bit funky. Let's uh, let's do a purpley color. Um, the reason I want to do this is because I just want it to pop a little bit. So on areas which appear to be deep within the skin, they're going to be appearing purple. Um, and I'm going to increase this gain to 1.0 as well. And because it's got a, a sort of further distance, so I'm, seeing, I'm keeping the distance at 20, um, you still won't be able to see it as much as if I brought it forward to a, a shorter distance. So um, I'm not going to add any specularity in just yet, but I will just do a render and we'll have a look what it's, it looks like. All right, so already you should be able to tell that it's uh, quite a lot lighter overall because of that blue um, subsurface color I use. So this is the diffuse one and this is the um, subsurface scattering one. So it might be a little bit bright, um, I might have to sort of mess around with that a little bit, but um, you can see that because it's got subsurface scattering, the shadow side is actually becoming illuminated because light's passing through and bouncing around inside and being shot out the other side towards the camera. Um, but overall, it's a little bit more effective than just the diffuse. While that looks, you know, not bad, um, this seems to have a lot more sort of fleshiness to it, um, particularly if I just rotate the camera around in areas where it's quite slim, like the um, the stalks for the eyes. Um, you can see that they're quite sort of translucent. And then these areas underneath aren't obviously getting as much light, so they're not appearing as translucent. So um, because I've got a couple of cool colors in there, well, the, I've got the blue color there, maybe I want to try pushing that into more of a, um, a purple or maybe sort of getting into a uh, fleshy pink color, and we'll just have a look what that looks like. So um, because with subsurface scattering, you will need to re-render every time you make a change. Um, some, otherwise, it won't quite update on the render. It might be too subtle of a difference, but I might just stick with that one for now. Um, and if I change this distance here, you'll see that that internal color is becoming a lot more apparent. So just bear that distance in mind. So maybe let's go to like 10. Yeah, so you can see that multiplying with the, um, with the colors between the folds. Um, it's probably making those folds a little bit too apparent, so 
Um, I'm just going to stick with a higher number, I think 15. Okay, so this is the default uh, color settings and this is the new one. So um, you're getting a lot more of that pink, which I quite like. He's starting to look a little bit more uh, jovial in his old age. So um, we're going to roll with that for now. So uh, this is just sort of like you sort of need to play with it a little bit. If The, the more experience you obviously you have with it, the better. Um, a couple other things I could have done was maybe done some extra subsurface scattering or a different type of... Um, uh, I could have done a different normal map for the warts that I've got there rather than actually have them bumped. Um, I could just bump the specularity. Uh, but I'm just going to run the specularity on a separate channel. So um, actually before I show you that, uh, I'll just show you the hue difference. So um, if I, I might be able to change this hue as it renders. So if you've ever used the hue slider in uh, Photoshop or anything like that, you'll be familiar with how this works. So essentially it's going to move all the hues of um, every channel in the subsurface. So at the moment it's moved everything to more of a green hue. Uh, that's in more of a purple hue. That doesn't look the worst. Um, so as you can see, this is sort of a quick way to try out some different colors, see what you like. You might get inspired by something. Um, but for me, I'm just going to stick with what I had in the first place for now. Um, so finally, I'll just show you what I do for specularity on this particular character. So we'll just push in a little bit of specularity. Um, I'm going to set the roughness to 0.4 because um, I don't want him to look too shiny. He might even be a bit too shiny there, actually. Yeah, that's not bad. So um, we're getting some subsurface scattering. It's a little bit on the subtle side, but it's not the worst. Um, I don't want him to look um, too translucent. I just want him to look like he's a bit fleshy. Um, and we're getting a little bit of specularity, which is sort of helping the overall slugginess to him. So um, let's have a look on the back side there, see how that transmission's working. Yeah, it's not too bad. So um, obviously you'd want to render this up. Um, I would recommend using the um, denoise feature of RenderMan to get this finished up. Um, if you want to see what the final is going to look like for this guy, uh, I'll probably post it on Instagram or something like that. So if you're following me on Instagram, you better spot that there. Or you can check it out on the Facebook page. Um, but I think this guy's getting pretty close to being finished. Um, I sort of just wanted to play around a little bit with some subsurface scattering this week um, and do some Z brushing, which I've been able to do. So hopefully you've learned something from um, seeing my a little bit of my workflow there. Also, just before I go, I just remembered someone asked me about this the other day, um, why I use the diffuse channel in conjunction with subsurface scattering color. So um, the reason for that is as you have less diffuse, by nature, most things have a, diff have a diffuse surface to them. Um, it's, it's sort of a rough surface in which it will reflect some light, uh, but not specular. Um, as you reduce this, you'll find that as you get into just the subsurface scattering channels, it's you're not getting that clean reflection of light so you're not getting a clean representation of what the um, color map is and uh, because it's blending so heavily with the other subsurface scattering um, channels and colors are the other the other the short gain and the medium gain and the long um, gain uh, it's sort of becomes a little bit too squishy and this might be what you want for certain things uh, like maybe a jelly bean or something like that might look good with this sort of effect um, you, it, because a jelly bean really only has sort of a fairly soft shell. Even then, I'd still probably put a little bit of diffuse in it, to be honest. But um, it, most of the time, that's not what you're after. Um, and I, I, you know, it doesn't look bad, but um, it doesn't look. It's not exactly what I'm looking for um, with this particular character. So um, in a lot of cases, you'll end up just using a little bit of diffuse or a lot of diffuse, like I did. I could probably have. Uh, stood to use a little bit less maybe sort of around that area there particularly on the light facing side you see a lot less penetration uh, the higher your diffuse channel is uh, but obviously because the color map um, is working conjunction blending and multiplying with these other um, channels of subsurface scattering you've got to remember that they will uh, have an effect on the overall contrast and saturation of your map um, if you do have any questions, though, make sure you post them in the comments um, and I'll be happy to get back to you. Um, and if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe because I do a couple of these tutorials every week uh, for all sorts of CG products like RenderMan Today and, and 3D Code and ZBrush and Maya um, and anything else upon request. Uh, if you'd like to stay up to date on this guy or any of the other things on my channel, make sure you're following on the Facebook page, link in the description. That's it for now, though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.